from the Center for the Study and Teaching of Writing at The Ohio State University. This is Writer's Talk. I'm Doug Dangler. I'm here at the 2013 Ohioana Book Festival talking to authors and I am now talking to Emily Richards. Yes. Who has written over 70 novels. Wow in a variety of different genres, and you've won the Romance Writers of America Rita Award, the highest prize given to romance authors. I have, yes. Well, welcome to Writer's Talk. Ah, thanks, Doug. So, 70 novels. Right, but it's uh, been doing it for a while. I okay. Don't, I didn't do them all last year, I promise. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you've got eight novels have been made into movies for German TV. Right. Um, t tell me about that. Why German TV? Uh, you know, it? it's just one of those serendipities, which is, I think all of us know that our books will never be made into movies, so we don't expect it. So well, I'm expecting a lot of German movies out of my books. Are you? <laughs> I've never written anything. I'm sorry. sorry. There you go. So, so, but what led it to Germany? What do you think? What led uh, well, to they were looking for. Um, they wanted to set a book in New Zealand, and I. So they were sort of looking at books that had been set in New Zealand, and somebody recommended one that I had written um, about uh, New Zealand called Smokescreen, and um, that I got the setting from a book from a trip. Okay. And um, so they read it and they really liked it. They liked my message of the things, the sort of underlying um, interest in people and, and issues in all my books. And they just really thought there was a lot of meat there for movies. So uh, they started reading all my other books and decided that I was the author they wanted to focus on. Okay. So they did eight books, which was really great. And I got to go to Germany and see and do PR for one of them. And I got to go to New Zealand and see one of them being filmed. So mm, it was okay. very, uh, the whole thing was a big serendipity. Now, as an author, what kind of input did you get to have None. on? <laughs> It was very quick. Though. Well, I actually had some input, but they don't listen to me. I mean, they were absolutely <laughs> charming. I just love these people and the screenwriter. They were so sincere about loving my books and the, my stories, but, you know, they did screen and and novels are very different. Right. And so they would take the themes out of my books and a lot of the characters, and some of them were very true to my stories. And, and they used a lot of my smaller romances, which was fun, because I now write bigger women's fiction. Um, but they really contracted for some of my smaller books. And sure. so some of them were very true to form and some of them were very hard to recognize. But mm -hmm. I had only set one book in New Zealand in my life and all of the, all of the um, movies were filmed in New Zealand using New Zealand as the backdrop. Mm -hmm. So they had to make some serious changes to, mm -hmm. to make them all fit into that. What, uh, why the New Zealand? Because the, the success of the first one led them to say that everything's gonna have to be in no, New Zealand? No, I think they or? originally decided that New Zealand would be a great setting for a series that mm -hmm. uh, they would do a series of movies because it's so oh and it is it's a fabulous country and it has everything it has every kind of setting you can imagine from you know very flat lands when mm -hmm. it has the wonderful thermal areas it has these incredible mountains and then these great cities it has everything New Zealand's wonderful so are you starting to add more of that into your books uh, as you're writing does that no I think you? the series has ended they they decided to do something that it was fun because the last book that was made into a movie was their highest rating them that of mm -hmm. any of them it really did well but then they decided as as producers often do that it was time to make a change for their Sunday night spot they uh, okay. they wanted a different kind of movie so i got i got my run and it was great i loved it okay. Um, did you get a mix with the actors, and so now you know, like New Zealand? I guess it'd be German New Zealand actors, right? Yeah, that, they were all filmed in German. Mm -hmm. they, right. Yeah, because it was for the German audience, right. and then they were translated for the New Zealand audience. They were subtitled. So. <laughs> okay. Um, so when you have something like that, and you're publishing in a lot of different countries, uh, tell me your experience with that. Is that something that you say, you know, um, obviously if it's in a language you don't know. I have no control over it. I don't ask about it. You have no it. control, and, and you just it's it probably go. better not to know, <laughs> because they can't possibly. I mean, I'm listening right now to a German mystery that's been translated into English, mm -hmm. and it's a bestseller, and it's probably going to be a, a good seller. Here. And yet, some of the language is so not American. It's mm -hmm. they use, like keep talking about he's getting out of the slammer and the joint, and these are things <laughs> that you wouldn't do in an American crime novel today. Right. And whoever, and I'm sure that it was a, a translation thing. So I have when I look back at it the opposite way, I don't really want to know what they're putting in there. Okay. Because I, I, I don't have any control anyway. All right. Now it's uh, you have another series, uh, Ministry is Murder, mm -hmm. which you claim is actually not based on. Your husband's occupation as I a minister. I have to claim that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. So, yeah. so you, because the minister, I'm not. I, I confess, I'm not familiar with the series. But is the, the minister is probably solving the mysteries, right? No, it's the minister's wife. 
Oh, the, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that makes much more sense. Yes, right? exactly. Yes, right. because the minister's wife is always the and better part. It is part, very right? different. I wrote when I wrote the series. My husband was serving in an ur urban Washington D.C. area church, a large church, and the church in the um, in the books is a small, sort of mixed congregation and mixed in terms of their uh, the theology. It's mm -hmm. a bit a lot more conservative than the one that my husband was actually serving okay. uh, in a in a small town in Ohio that doesn't really exist. Okay. So, and it was great. That was fun. I love writing those books. What was yeah. it there that you loved about well, the Well, they're a lot lighter than everything else I write. Mm -hmm. They're shorter and they're in first person and I got into Aggie's head with no trouble and just was always delighted to hear what Aggie had to say about anything. That okay. was great fun. Well, walk me through your writing process. Um, since you've done over 70 mm -hmm. of these things, I'm assuming it's uh, of novels, sorry, I, I assume that it's something that comes pretty naturally and you sit down and say, this is what I have to do how does that work for you? Is it well? It'd be nice if it was that easy, but <laughs> you know. I was trying. Yeah, I know. Good trying. for you. But I was. Don't forget, I was first published in the mid 1980s, so I've been sure. at this a long time. Um, I do write an outline, and I and I do work from an outline, and that takes a long, long time. But I figure that the time it takes me to do an outline are all the wasted pages that other people mm -hmm. uh, have written themselves into dead ends and have to start again. So it's all the you know it. it the, it's all about planning ahead for mm -hmm. me um, so that I don't have to write myself in. What happens as you're writing and you suddenly feel like, you know, I don't, I want to deviate from I this do outline? I deviate. Okay. Absolutely. So you can still write oh, yourself into a dead end. Yeah, or mm -hmm. I can write myself into a better place. Um, I know, especially with the mysteries or the suspense novels I've written, sometimes when I get to a certain spot, I go like, oh no, he didn't really do it, someone else did it. <laughs> you know, and that those are really, that's fun. It's like, oh good, you know, I, I put all the clues in there and I didn't even see it until now that this mm -hmm. is the person who must have done it. All right. Is there something that's going to happen where the minister is actually the one that did it? Is there a possibility of that in the future well, not for her the husband. ministry is that murder? Would, that, that, would be, that would really be kind of hard on the series if, right, her husband, just, if her husband was in jail. Well, you don't know. Well, you know, it'd be something, it'd but, be a really interesting way to do it. He was a big suspect it. in the first book. He, really? And that's how she got into the whole sleuthing thing, okay. is that her husband was, looked pretty suspicious. But she didn't think he of was. Not. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, you've got another book, uh, One Mountain Away, is your latest book, mm -hmm. right? So tell me about what went into that and uh, how you came upon that. Well, the whole idea for the series, and it is a series, that was the first of the book, mm -hmm. and the second one comes out next month. Um, is that this is a time in history when a lot of people are suffering and really need a helping hand. Um, mm -hmm. And there's lots of ways for, for people to be helped, but one of the most classic and important ways is for women to reach out to other women, which we've done through history on a personal level. So I really wanted to write about a group of women who sort of band together to try to make a difference in the lives of women who need their help. Um, and, and not as issue books, but just sort of as a, you know, this is um, sort of, a, hopeful books, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and of course they end up being issue books because each of the women has issues that needs help. And so the second book is a lot about um, illiteracy and, and women in prison. Um, and the third book, which I'm writing now, has a lot to do with spousal abuse. So, and the, and the, the books aren't about that, but that's a backdrop of the story. And, but the books are really about the way women can reach out to other women and make a difference in each other's lives. Okay. Have you had to do, I mean, tell me about the research that you have to do for these sorts of books. I'm assuming that, you know, prison is not something that necessarily you may have known about ahead of time. Exactly. I had to do, there's just one very brief scene in prison and luckily there were some wonderful internet things that I could find that actually went into the prison I had chosen and followed the lives of a group of women for two hours and so I was able to get a lot of details from that and of course mm -hmm. I did an enormous amount of just looking into the legal code in North Carolina and what, which is where the books are all set in the Asheville area. So I spent a lot of time doing research but it was all, almost all of it on the internet. Okay. at good sites on the internet. <laughs> I mean, in terms of reliable sites. You right, know, right. Yeah. How do you determine that? What's your, uh, it has to be a state? Well, if, or, yeah, if it's a state. When I also get, a, and I've done other prison things, and I, there's a, a site called Prison Talk, which is um, where inmates talk, people who are friends of inmates, wives mm -hmm. of inmates, will talk about the issues and what it's like to visit them in prison and stuff. So you get a really good idea of what it's like for the people waiting at home. Mm. Um, and sometimes you get a really clear idea of what it's like for the people in prison that too. sounds like a really depressing No, nah, I'm never website. depressed. I, I mean, I did a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot of research about leukemia, and I was on leukemia boards all the time. Mm -hmm. There again, so much p 
people reach out to each other. This is how they help each other is by giving them advice, giving them, you know, telling their story. This is mm -hmm. what happened to us. This is what you should watch out for. And it all gives me great hope for our for humanity that people are so willing, even in these formats where, you know, it's really death and dying for the leukemia patients mm -hmm. and for the prison people. I mean, this is a terrible way to live. And yet they're all reaching out to each other and trying to help, which is kind of the underlying theme of the books. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a very positive note to end on. Okay. Uh, Emily Richards, I thank you very much. Thank you for having me. For being here on Writer's Talk and from the Center for the Study and Teaching of Writing at The Ohio State University. This is Writer's Talk. I'm Doug Dangler. Keep writing.